Thank you. Oh. There we go, there we go. Alyssa is going to be my cue lady because she has the microphone thing. No, you know what I mean. If you can do it, if you, yeah, if you can do it. I just look at you and go, ah, and then you have to do it. Okay. I haven't started yet. Okay. All right, so here we go. I'm here to talk to you guys about juggling. That would probably be the first time that I've ever gotten that much of a response from juggling, but it's, hopefully it's not going to be the last. Now, as you can see, I had a couple of mic issues going on, and we got some sound and clicker issues going on. I sent a writer to Melissa on what we were supposed to have for this event, and we couldn't get the permits pulled for the chainsaws or the fire. So I want you guys to do, right now, just imagine me standing on one foot, juggling chainsaws, a torch, and a bowling ball. <laughs> Naked? Okay, all right, cool, all right? That, that kind of sets me up for what I, want to, what I want to do. So I want to talk to you guys about what is juggling. Now, if you look at Wikipedia, they have a very formal transition, uh, formal explanation of what juggling is, and you can pretty much ask anybody what juggling is, and the folks will identify it. Yeah, it's kind of throwing things up and catching them and making it kind of pretty. Yes, no? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yes, okay, Melissa. Ooh. All right, I need a cue, I need a cue, all right? But the big question that most people ask when they find out that you juggle, because I spent a lot of time in college juggling, and for me it was, I didn't have a <laughs> That was the response from most people as they saw me. It seemed perfectly normal to me, and I was like, oh wow, I juggle because I can juggle, and you know, and you have people that come up to you all the time when they see you juggling. You guys ever play with a tennis ball? And you have a dog run up to you, and the dog is like, "Oh, we're gonna play, we're gonna play catch." And you're like, "No, I just wanted to have my tennis ball." That's how it is when you're juggling. Come on. Oh, <laughs> oh, there we go. We'll get it. We'll get it going. I'll, I'll just be dancing the whole time. <laughs> Something has to happen when you do that. So I'm saying, so so when you're juggling. Folks come up to you all the time, and they're like, ooh, and they're waiting for you to do something, you're like, I, I just juggle, I, mean, I don't really, I don't have an act set up, I just juggle. So, then they ask, why, why are you doing this? And it's like, they don't do that if you go out to like a basketball court, and somebody's out there shooting free throws, somebody comes up and is like, so are you trying out for a team? And you're like, no, I'm just shooting free throws. It's the same thing with juggling. Every person that juggles is not out there to entertain you, though it can be fun, all right? Another thing, oh, yeah, that's the whole point. Now, jugglers are not clowns. Do we have any clowns in here? Besides Flip? Yes. All right, well, as a clown, you learn to do a lot of things, and you might learn to juggle, but just because you juggle doesn't mean that you're a clown. And this is something very important to me because I've been confused as a clown many times, and it's a little bit traumatic. So how did I get started juggling? <laughs> All right, cool. I didn't mean, felt like I went a little slower, but be easier. How did I get started juggling? I used to be really into magic tricks when I was a kid in high school. Yeah, you got any magicians out here? <laughs> She's like, oh, but I can't tell you. Right. You might have a magician over there that's getting ready for something. Now the cool thing about magic is you learn to do a trick. I had one trick where you, you put your hand and you pull a card, you show the card, and then you take the card and pull another deck and like pluck the deck or don't do anything, Melissa. Or you do that and then you take the card and boom, the card's there on top of the deck. And it's really cool and you have to show a different person this trick every single time because after like once they figure out how you did it. And so they're like, oh, okay, cool, show me another one. And you're like, oh, I don't, I don't really know another one. And they're like, oh, well, show me how to do that one. It's like, sorry, the magician's code says I can't tell you how to do what I just did. And you end up having to go back and learn more tricks that you can't show or tell to anybody. There was a guy that did a magic trick once where he put a box inside of a tree that was growing, waited like 40 years, and then came back 
and they did this magic trick, and they said, okay, now to find the car, we're going to open up this tree, and he opens up the tree and pulls out the box, and everybody was like, oh my god, this guy's a magician, but he can't ever do that again. <laughs> so that was the most annoying thing to me about magic tricks, because I couldn't share them. And for juggling, I met a guy that was a magician and a juggler. He started juggling in front of me, and he was like, oh, you know, you're doing this? I was like, oh my gosh, that's pretty cool. How do you do it? He was like, oh, well, you throw this ball up, and you throw this ball up, and then you throw this ball up, and then you... I was like, yeah, but what's the trick? He's like, there's no trick. You just have to do it. And so the thing about learning how to juggle is it, all it requires is a commitment. And that commitment to yourself, once you give yourself a commitment that you're going to learn how to juggle, you've given your word. And when it comes to learning how to juggle, all you need is your word. Melissa? <laughs> <laughs> is your word and your balls. All right? And you don't break them for anybody, all right? So. Um, Gramps asked for drinking games. Every time I drop a ball, you guys can feel free to take shots. Um, I won't take any shots at right now. So he taught me how to juggle. And so I learned how to juggle. I was like, OK. All right, you got two balls. And anybody ever seen someone try to juggle? And they're like, OK, I can do one ball like this. All right, so if I'm going to do two balls, I'm going to be a juggler. All right, I'm juggling. And then you try to do three balls, and you kind of get to this. And you're like, all right, well, fuck it. All right, I guess I'm not a juggler. All right? I know, exactly. Melissa, give it to me. All right, so your goal in juggling is to make it look like you're doing something hard, which is you're juggling three balls in two hands. It looks like that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I'm just about done now. <laughs> All right. Now, once you guys get this down, you're like, okay, cool. I know how to juggle. You can always tell folks that just started juggling because they do the juggler's chase where they're like, <laughs> where they, you know, they fall off the stage or whatnot. Or they, you get this one where you're like, that doesn't look like the guy I did on TV. So people are going to be breaking down how you juggle based on how good your pattern is. So somebody looks over and like, well, that guy's got a nice pattern. Or, well, that guy's got a really tight pattern. Or, oh, man, his pattern is just way too big. Or, it's like, ugh. I'm like, what's going on? Oh, God, that guy's pattern is nasty. All right? And you want your pattern to be as close to two-dimensional as possible. So you don't want to be doing this unless it's really intentional. So you get this down, and you're standing outside. You're feeling really good. You're like, I can juggle now. And then what inevitably happens is someone walks up to you, and they say, <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you a secret. Juggling four balls is actually easier than juggling three balls. <laughs> yeah. All right. Because when you're juggling four balls, without a light in your face, when you're juggling four balls, it looks real cool, but all you're really doing is this and this at the same damn time. <laughs> all right, so to give you an idea, if I'm juggling four balls and I've got a pink one here to give you an illusion of, so you can see what's going on differently, you realize, oh, he's not really doing anything. <laughs> all right, now what I'm going to tell you, however, is that it's not a trick. So, if you can learn to do two balls in one hand and learn to do two balls in your other hand, then you can do four balls. So, now, you're excited, you're happy, you're out there, you got your four balls ready, and what inevitably happens, Melissa? Okay, all right. Juggling five balls is a lot harder than juggling three balls, and a lot harder than juggling four balls. So you actually have to go back and learn how to do this because juggling five balls is the same pattern. You guys remember the pattern? That figure eight kind of thing? All right? Well, when I was juggling four, I was doing that, and I was doing that. When you're juggling five, you have to put that same pattern, but you gotta do it high enough that you can catch all the balls and clap before you can even add another ball. So now, if you guys ever see somebody out there in the, on the beach like, that's not a clown, not necessarily an entertainer. He just has this passion. 
it'll probably take you, you can learn to juggle three balls in a day easily. Four balls a day and a half. Five balls, you'll spend three months like standing out like. <laughs> then you gotta go and get all your balls. Get them again. Can you grab that from your Then you go again and say, okay, your first thing, you try to get a flash. Now, a flash is five balls, five catches. That is it's a little hard to see. Oh, all right, that's the perfect flash. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> However, a flash in the world of juggling, because jugglers are very, very particular, a flash doesn't count. It's like, oh yeah, we just flash them. That's like, that's like second base. All right? So to get a full thing, you have to do five balls times the number of hands, or balls times the hands. Now you've juggled. It's called like a full shower. So you say, okay, that's the jugglers, all right? Yeah, okay. All right, well, I'm gonna practice three months. I'll get five balls. You got three balls, you got five balls, and so now somebody walks by, you just kind of random, you're like, I got five balls, I caught them. What it never ends up happening? Melissa? Can you do six? All right, yeah. Now you guys remember the rule about four, right? Yes. All right, if you can do four, that would be two in each hand, which means if you're going to do six, next even number, what would that be? Three in each hand. It's a little easier than doing five, but it's not easy. All right, so you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> All right, I can do this. I can do this. So you practice doing six balls. So you practice doing six balls for as long as you can, and eventually you kind of get it. Yes. All right. So now you're out there. Yeah, I can do six. And somebody goes, "Ooh, whoa, that's awesome. That's awesome." And you put like two or three years into juggling. <laughs> you reached your zen state, and what ends up happening? <laughs> Can you do seven? This is where it becomes more existential. <laughs> because you tell yourself, yes, I can probably do seven, but do I need to do seven? <laughs> and that is like the, 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 you take that different path in juggling because it's not about how many balls you can do. And there's a real simple problem as to why it's so hard. And you guys should understand. <laughs> What was that, man? We have only two hands. We have an option to grow a third hand. Um, no, it's a real simple thing. If we have any physicists, any kinetics, projectile motion, all right, this guy. We've got a, a couple of guys here. You guys can talk this out later on. Um, when you're juggling these balls, you have two options. If you want to juggle one ball, you can throw it this high. If you want to juggle two balls, you can either Throw them that high to keep that same tempo, or throw them that fast. Those two things, time and height, are not linear. So I want to add a third ball. Notice each time you see a juggler, each time you add a ball, they're like, oh, okay, can I do this? It's really hard to do five balls in a space that I can do three. All right, so I go to five, I'm up here. You guys saw the picture of the guy doing seven. He's in a gym. All right? Your hands have to move faster, and the balls have to go higher for each time that you add a ball. And it's not like, oh, yeah, just go you know, twice as fast. No, it's like you got to go four times as fast. So you guys got the maximum number of balls that a guy's juggled has been like 11. And he did it for 22 catches or something like that. It gets really, really hard. So you'll see folks standing out there for like 10 years, and they're like. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason is, the higher you go, with your balls, and the faster you go, guess what you lose? Accuracy. All right, so it'd be the equivalent of, we'll say, nobody remembers Michael Jordan as much, so we'll say LeBron James. Or who, who's a good free point thrower? Who's a good free point thrower? Yeah, that guy. What would you just say? All right, so you picture that guy, and say, okay, you got, just sit there, shoot free throws, you got five minutes to make five throws, just make them swish. He's like, oh, that's easy. All right, so now you got one minute to make 10 throws, make them swish. Okay, all right, all right. Now you got 30 seconds to make 20 throws, make them swish. At some point in time, you run into a physical limitation of like getting every single ball out there, and it's not just that. He's got to do it left-handed too, all right? And not just that, he has to alternate them, right hand and left hand, to the same height. And if you come off with a change of like one degree, when you're up at a height of doing seven balls, you end up 
a difference of like a foot and a half. So, the next question that comes up, Melissa, hook me up. How do you get three balls? All right? This is called a cascade. And a cascade is the happy time of juggling. Because <laughs> you're done saying, okay, I need to get more balls, and I need to get this. Most balls get expensive. Now, if you know a cascade, hook me up, Melissa. You can turn it inside out. Oh, yeah. And you can tell the new jugglers, because they always juggle like this. <laughs> so you turn that cascade inside out, and it's called a reverse cascade. You're like, oh, good, reverse cascade feels good. And you can take that same reverse cascade and do a half shower. Now, what a half shower is, it's a cascade, and your right hand is doing an overthrow, a reverse cascade. But if you can learn a half shower and take that half shower in both directions, each one of these balls has 13 pennies in it, by the way. They cost me about 13 cents. <laughs> then you have an option. You've got a cascade, you've got a reverse cascade, and then you have a half shower. That means you can learn how to do an underhand toss. Okay, cool. All right, oh, uh, all right yeah. <laughs> But what jugglers do is we combine these different types of movements that we do. So you can take that underhand toss and the overhand and do something like that. They call that the wheel. But if you can take a wheel, I want to step over here. Can you guys see my balls? <laughs> no, the lights, the lights on my face. But if you can take that wheel and combine it with an overhand throw with a hand toss, no. then you can do funky things like this mess. All right? That's what that was. Now you guys will notice, each one of these numbers that I put up there has a little number after it. That one is a three. Each one of those numbers were all three. However, you guys remember when you first decided you wanted to learn how to juggle and you did this one? And then you tried to add this one? And do that? This is actually a much harder pattern to do. And it's called a full shower. Now you guys will see it by a full shower, I've got the numbers five, five, one. You guys do see that, right? Yeah. Okay, it might be a little low, but it says five, five, one, because that is when you're getting into a whole different class of juggling, and that is quantum juggling. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't name it. A guy named Belkin, I believe, is the one that named it. Mr. However, these guys don't just sit around and make up stuff in the beach. These are folks that are hanging out at Oxford and MIT and University of Michigan telling their mom that things are going really well. <laughs> when they're actually, this is all they're really doing. Now, quantum juggling, also known as sight swaps, I spoke with a good friend of mine who's run a juggling store for 25, 30 years. I've worked at two juggling stores. And uh, I said, you know what, I'm gonna be doing this presentation. I'd like to do the presentation on sight swaps, but I'm not sure because I feel like I don't know enough about sight swaps for, to do a 20 minute presentation, and I, don't, I think people might get bored. And Greg said, yeah, I would get bored with a 20 minute presentation on sight swaps. And so, I said, let me pull back and show things more generally. All sight swaps are, are letting you know how to throw the ball and how high you're gonna throw the ball. So you have a notation, jugglers do this, have a notation for, this is a three, okay. This is also a three, all these are three balls, all these are three throws. Except that one, that's a zero. <laughs> this is a five. All right, this is a four. You can write down exactly what kind of pattern you wanna do. So you can do a five, five, one, or five, one, and a juggler will say, okay, a five, one, he said two numbers, those two numbers add up to five plus one, those two numbers add up to six, so six divided by three, two, who said that? <laughs> yes, yes. Six divided by two is three. So that means a five-one is a three-ball pattern that works. That means you can do that. A full shower. Or somebody says, oh, yeah, well, can you do a four-three-two? You're like, no, you can't do a four-three-two, dumbass, because a four is going to land, and the three following it are going to land at the exact same time. So if you do a four and a three at the same time, this is what happens. You get a collision. And so... Folks have taken enough numbers to write things out and come up with new juggling patterns. They don't say how you do it, where you throw it behind your back, but they do tell you, oh yeah, this starts as just a 441. And so I learned today, I think, how to do a 441. No one's gonna know this, but you throw your juggling, 
you throw a four, four, and a one. So someone can write that down on paper and say, oh yeah, you can do that. Now, these jugglers get a little serious about this. Okay, oh, Melissa? And they actually have very specific notations for what works. If someone wants to come explain this, I'll be happy to listen to it later on. And sometimes it's easier. What I've noticed is that when people explain these things, they explain them from the perspective that they're explaining it to other jugglers. So if you're explaining like projectile motion for rockets to another rocket scientist, it's real easy for them to understand, right? However, Melissa, when you're explaining mathematics of juggling term patterns, and you start talking about Grassmannian patterns and site swaps and F to the N to the I, you kind of lose a lot of people. And so you don't need to actually know that to juggle. What you do need to do to juggle is go out and find a juggler. I went to a juggling store when I was 16 years old and I hung out there so much they put me on the clock. I hung out with this guy, Melissa, oh yeah, Rod Kimball. Rod Kimball used to have longer hair when I know him, but he's still the same guy. Awesome guy, I want to say sweetheart, if a guy can say another guy's a sweetheart. Um, Rod is a flying Karmatov brother. You guys, you guys seen those guys? They do all kinds of crazy stuff. Broadway, last time I heard from him, he was in Shanghai at the same time that I was in Shanghai, um, but he was working a lot harder. So Rod spends his time practicing the flying Karmatov, and then when he has free time, Rod spends it going to the park in New York and teaching people how to juggle for free. Jugglers love to share. I want to let you guys know that if anybody wants to come play my balls, then um, <laughs> feel free to hit me up. Melissa, feel free to hit up Melissa as well. If you look at this website, Library of Juggling, you can find all types of site swaps that guys have out there. So they'll go from the simples to the wheels to the juggles to the five ball patterns to the mills to multiplex site swaps to doing fives and three ball starts and how to drop your balls and how to keep talking and so on and so forth. Um, I want to let you guys, I want to let you guys feel as you are. And I want to thank you guys for having me out here. If anyone has any questions. Yes, ma'am. What's the hardest thing to do? Hardest thing to juggle. The hardest thing to juggle will probably be these nuts. Oh. <laughs> no, no, seriously, they are. <laughs> because they're so small, they're like nice. <laughs> and so they're harder to like to get out there and the right back. Yeah. 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 It's a light and you have to drop them or whatever. <laughs> I did not. The ceiling is actually not high enough, but if you want to, we can do an exchange later on, and um, we can do like a five-seven thing. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'm gonna hand it back over to. I hope you record it. I hope I recorded it too. Good job, Shaka.